Have you found yourself wondering, is there something more? If so, then you, my friend, are a dreamer in waiting. I'd like to welcome you to the Dream On podcast. I'm Julia Gentry, and along with my husband, Travis Gentry, we discuss real, raw, and not small talk conversations about faith, family, entrepreneurship, and all the things that matter most in this life in order to help people bridge the gap between what they currently have and what they really want most. Join us as we give you insights, tools, and strategy to chase every dream that's on the inside of you, but be forewarned. This podcast is not for the faint of heart, but rather those of heart. This is the Dream On Podcast. Hello there and welcome to another Dream On Podcast. Yours truly. Travis Travis Gentry. Gentry. (laughs) (laughs) That's all that matters. Travis is And my co-host, Julia Gentry. That's right. She's joining us today. Today's a good one. Today is a great day. Today is a great day. So we're talking about fighting. Well, no. what we call intense fellowship. What is that? So that's how we describe when we disagree on something or when our child comes out of us <laughs> in a fit of anger. That's not me. <laughs> and happened. we don't know how to process it. So we take it out on typically the ones you love the most. Which would be... Each other. Or your kids. Or your and kids. And they have nothing to do with it. It's actually your thing. It's, oh, we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about your thing today. So, so today. Yep. Yeah. So, steal it. Use it. It's intense fellowship. We don't argue. We don't fight. We just have intense fellowship. But we've learned to not do it better. And I like that you said that. Mm-hmm. Um, but we learned how to do it differently. Yeah. Well, and I think... You know, I won't toot our horn too often because you guys know on this podcast, Travis and I keep it real. Um, But if there's one area that you and I have done really, really well, it's in our marriage. And so today, wherever you're at in your marriage or maybe in your relationship with your kids or anyone who you might be, quote unquote, fighting with at any given time, we just really want to open up um, our lives and share how we view our communication with each other. Um, how we've tackled this issue. Um, and really, as you start to dream with the people that matter most, I wish that I could tell you it's beautiful and it's sometimes clunky and hard and scary. And you have two different people, uh, right? Like tackling the same thing in very different ways that can escalate <clears throat> and get out of hand. And so today we really just wanted to kind of give you um, a front row seat into how we have learned to do this differently. And the, the process and the journey of... Intense fellowship, Mm -hmm. I mean, it has been years in the making. Totally. And and how we have really created and how we do it differently. Yeah. And so, one, I want to start out with kind of the... um, The foundation. The foundation. Um, I guess we could call it that. I was going to use a different word. But um, looking back on how you see your mom and dad, let's call it argue because that's what Mm -hmm. most people, or yell or scream... Or how they communicate when they're in a disagreement. Or if you grew up with just a single parent, you still saw them frustrated or angry. And sometimes it came out to you. And so I think that's a big part of this whole process. Mm -hmm. Because you internalize, you're watching your parents or your loved ones, your grandparents, whoever you grew up with or around. And you saw how they communicated, and you tend to model that. Totally. And it it becomes normal, right? So if you grew up in a family that would fight all the time, fighting seems normal. Or if they would yell all the time, you come to find out that yelling seems normal. And so what happens a lot of times is not that we want to say that these people are in the wrong, right? Again, you have to be a firm believer that says everybody is doing the best that they can. Um, And so we're not trying to put them on blast. And a lot of times we normalize it. So I talk to so many people that are like, well, my parents did it, or it's what I saw, or it's what I'm accustomed to, or it's what I'm used to, or it's how I, the only way I was heard. And so it was something that we saw modeled to us that became normal. And I think you can go down even like culturally. Mm -hmm. I think there's certain cultures that do that differently. Totally. And there's certain parts of the country or the certain parts of the world, like your immediate environment. Yeah. So I think you've got different layers and then your friends. Yeah. How, how did you argue or how did you see people interact? Mm-hmm. Because most of the time they did not do now how we communicate because yeah. you wouldn't you wouldn't go to your friend and say, 
like, here's how it makes me feel. For sure. You know, so we're going we're gonna to walk through the process, but like how I grew up and how what I saw in my interpretation and, and then going into marriage, we didn't talk about that. We didn't talk about, okay, here's how we're going to argue. <laughs> you know, here's how we're going to fight. So when I get frustrated, you do this. And when you get mad or whatever, you do this. Oh, and when you do that, then I'll do this. So good. Like think, no one talks about I that. I think even saying that, like you're right. Nobody sits down and goes, hey, here's how we're going to fight. Nobody says that at yeah. all, <clears throat> but it's such a part of, right? It's just a part of marriage. It's a part of life of like you hit a moment of not, if we're going to disagree, it's when we're going to disagree. And we've created no roadmap for success on how to do it well. Mm -hmm. So hopefully today you walk away with a little roadmap that you can rinse and repeat. <laughs> and, repeat. and start to start to practice these. And, and you typically, you know, you look at why people get divorced. Mm -hmm. And there's a few reasons behind that. One is money. Mm -hmm. So you typically argue about mm -hmm. money, sex. You typically argue or don't about, talk about it or don't talk about it, mm -hmm. um, which leads to disconnect and resentment. Yep. Um, what else would you say that that I think it's people a lack argue? Of, yeah, I think it's just truly a lack of communication. You know, a lot of times you you I've spoken with many people, friends and clients included that are like, well, we just don't know how to communicate. And you're like, good. <laughs> and now I'd you've like identified to, the problem. I'd like to invite you in the opportunity <laughs> to use your words and that's what we're going to do today this is going to be as simple as learning to invite the other person on the other side of the table into what's going on in your head and in your heart now again this will be clunky the first time you do it but if I don't use my words and share with Travis where I'm at and what I'm feeling and what I'm experiencing and for him to like put the boxing glove down and realize this is less to do with him and more to do with me and vice versa then, then we're both we're both punching in the dark. Yep. And, yep. Go, go ahead. No, go ahead. Um, the other thing I would say, from a like a guy's perspective, is like the um, wild at heart. Mm -hmm. Like when I feel confined. So I would say, like bringing a man and a woman together, and our natural instincts that are in us, mm -hmm. and feeling wild and free and wanting to do things. And so when you get married you can feel prohibited sure. because everything changes. It's not just you doing what you want to do. And so from my perspective, I want to talk about that a little bit too. That's great. And then how you interpret and in internalize that yeah. when I would get frustrated at myself because I didn't use the words to communicate to you, hey, I'm feeling this way. Like I need to go camping for a couple of days sure. <laughs> by myself, <laughs> you know, like, or go do something that I feel called to do as opposed to being resentful of like, I can't, you yeah. know, we have kids or, you know, yeah. you won't let me. Yeah. And instead of using your words and breaking it down of like, man, I'm just feeling really anxious or frustrated or angry or whatever it is. Yeah. And most guys, to be honest with you, don't. Yeah, they don't. You, It's not that, you know, I think that there's a misnomer that says that a man doesn't have emotions. That's not true. I know a lot of men that have emotions. It's putting words to your emotions, right? Mm -hmm. I think that there's a level of learning to take responsibility that it's not a man or a woman having emotions. We all have emotions and it's going to be this consciousness and mindfulness to actually put a word to it. I feel angry. I feel anxious. I feel like put a word to it. Mm -hmm. um, I think that that's, that's going to take, you know, a huge, huge, huge pressure off of the conversation. Yep. So what would you say? So let's outline, okay, do we want to talk a little bit about like our interpretation or how like yeah, coming think, together as, as a yeah, husband I think that and there's, wife, like what that looked like? I have one moment that I think that this is the, the starting point for everybody is if you can kind of remember a first moment or a first instance when the fight didn't go well and then you can connect it with your your upbringing. I think that that will help. So for me, I remember when I don't, I, it's just the first fight that I remember in my mind, but I remember getting ready to leave. Like I was going to walk out the door. I wasn't going to emotionally leave and break up, but I was physically getting ready to leave the house. Um, and you said to me, and I, rem I, will, I will never <laughs> forget this. And Travis looks at me and he says, if you walk out that door, don't come back. And I knew you meant it. Thank God I didn't because there could have been a little bit of that manipulative, like, come chase me or whatever it is that I was thinking. But there was something so deep in me that was like, don't exit the building. And I, I remember that conversation too. It was in Milwaukee yeah. and it was when we were dating. Yep. And and you looked at me and said, don't leave or, or don't leave or don't come back. And I didn't. <clears throat> leave. And I didn't leave. Yeah. <laughs> 
And I remember feeling so much shame, which come to find out was one of the biggest hindrances to doing this well with you was my own shame, um, which we'll talk about today. Um, I remember the feeling of shame in my body. It almost gives me goosebumps thinking about it. Felt overwhelming. It just felt, and and I remember now looking back, connecting the dots was my parents got divorced. So I'm not saying that they didn't fight. Well, I actually don't even, I don't know. I don't remember. Mm -hmm. But to me, what it felt like is you leave when things get hard, right? You you exit like, and so I, I just thought, I think what my wiring was just leave, right? And then maybe it'll just go away or it'll disappear or whatever. Um, but what I didn't know was the step two. Step one was leave. You helped me with that, with one statement, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, leave and never come back. But then the step two, which was probably five years later that I had to deal with it, was the feeling of shame of actually looking at you and whatever we were going to discuss, the overwhelming feeling of shame was, I mean, debilitating. Mm -hmm. that, that was step two. Yeah. Step one was just don't leave the building. But that's what I saw. Yeah. So that, that, was, my, that, that was my starting point. Yeah. I would say mine, um, there's probably a couple that kind of come come one is like slowly slowly outburst mm -hmm. you know not communicating is really what it is yeah so kind of bearing it you know pushing things to the side okay i don't care that much i don't care that much and then i really care yeah. and so then it's like a yelling and within the con like in in the midst of that i'm looking for a response mm -hmm. And, and we've talked about this multiple times, but it's like, I was looking for a response and until I got that response, I wouldn't back down. Mm -hmm. So I needed to see her emotionally break down a little bit. Then I, f I felt like, okay, now she hears me. Yeah. And the, and what the interesting thing, and for anyone who's dealt with shame is that you don't want to, you don't want to show your cards. So here's what's going on behind the scenes. So first step into this of how do you communicate better together and how to do intense fellowship well is that. There is so many layers that are going on behind the scenes that you didn't even know about. So here I am feeling so much shame. So I am stoic, like show no emotion and pretend like nothing bothers me. And here's Travis of this like ready to bulldoze and just get some sort of reaction, a tear, a sorry, like anything. And so he's coming at me and I am like inside, I have all of the emotions, but outside my shame is like a wall, which he's tackling, <laughs> by the way, that's all going on behind the scenes. Yeah. So until, so until he erodes all of it and not a good way, this was years ago. Um, it like, and then by that time, then I bust. Right. And so now both of us are completely like toppled over in frustration and anger, but I just, looking back, I think that that's interesting to document for people. Yeah. And then the other thing I would say is just the transparency. Mm -hmm. Like, mean what you say, say what you mean, and it's it's like black and white. It's not gray. Yep. And so we used to get into confrontation about things where you were like, I'd, I'd ask you a question, mm -hmm. and you would say, give me kind of a vague number totally and i'm like no is it is it one or four yep. like it's not two or three yep. you know like give me the facts and so and i don't know necessarily where i pick that up mm -hmm. like growing up or why that means so much to me but it does yeah like tell me what it is i would rather it be not what i want and then we can deal with it Mm -hmm. um, and that's kind of been the foundation of our marriage Yeah, well, and is truth and honesty. Yep. And, and in my defense, there was a couple of little small white lies that I do remember that I will own. One was even over just the kind of cheese I put in your lasagna. Which well, that, that was like that the, was breaking the breaking point, point of like, oh, oh it really I does matter. I'm to... <laughs> kind of lying about the cheese that I put in. Shame. Here's what was attached to even my small white lies. It was shame. Mm -hmm. I was just so afraid to own it. Uh, that I felt like, okay, if I just tell you a different kind of cheese, it was shame. Um, but to my earlier point, which I was, I had such a good one. You might have to keep going because now I mommy can't think what it was. It is mommy brain, <laughs> but there was such a good point there. I don't know. Okay, I'll pick up on the story. So let me just give you the, the context of the story because it is it was like one of those moments. Where... Oh, I remember what it was. Okay. Can I say it really quick? <laughs> yeah. Okay, good. So also, so come find out, shame will make us do a lot of really crazy things, but over the years, what I started to realize is that you are an internal processor. I'm a verbal processor. So what would start to happen, I used to have to communicate this to Travis, is the minute that anything came out of Travis's mouth, it was fact. Because he had been processing in his head 
for hours or days or weeks, whatever he was going to say. So generally what comes out of Travis's mouth is very matter of fact, and it's very short. You'll even notice on this podcast, it is, it is what it is very short. For me, I'm a verbal processor, which means sometimes the things that come out of my mouth aren't always true because I'm processing, right? So where I would catch us is you would say things like, but that's not what you said in our last conversation. And in my head, I'm like, I changed my mind or I feel differently or because it looks different or I don't know, I didn't actually know. And so I had to actually take ownership for the fact that, hey, Travis, what I'm about to say, I don't know if it's true. I'm just verbally processing with you right now. Yeah. And that was a huge game changer too, because again, your experience was whatever comes out of the mouth is fact because that's your approach. And for me, it's whatever comes out of my mouth is processing because I'm not thinking about anything before it comes out of my mouth. Which is a great point. So let's shift to like one of those as, as we've learned that truth and transparency and more factual is important to me. And she's a verbal processor and likes to talk it out sometimes. And it's not necessarily black and white understanding that and where it's so important. And this is specifically to guys. I think sometimes what I've seen in relationships, a guy thinks like whatever I want and how I think it should be is how it is. Mm -hmm. And I think that's wrong. Mm -hmm. I think that you have to look at both sides and I've said it and I'll always say it. Robert Kiyosaki talks about it. There's three sides to a coin, the heads, the tails, and the center. I think in life, it would do you justice if you stand in the middle and always get perspective from both sides, not saying to go to the other side, but just get thoughts and opinions and ideas. Because now when we do have conversations, now I know she's a verbal processor and she knows I want truth. So she'll even say when we're talking, hey, I need to process this out. Mm -hmm. And then I can say, okay, so don't take what she's saying as fact. (laughs) So I don't hold it. (laughs) When I, when she doesn't say that, I am going to take it more as fact or like, this is the truth. And this is like, not tomorrow or next week is going to be a new truth. And it's going to be different and kind of blindside me because we already talked about it. Mm -hmm. So I thought we already came up with the what, what it is. And I will say in, you know, to totally honor you, the thing that you do really well that I would encourage man, male and female is, um, is you you really honored me with however I'm feeling, whatever I'm processing, whatever I'm feeling. There was a huge shift in you, especially, I think once it was, I communicated shame that like I struggle with shame and here's what it does in my body and here's what it makes me do that it, it wasn't until then that I remember you almost holding whatever I'm saying as though you were actually holding my heart. And I know that that does sound cheesy until you're actually realizing that like I'm doing life with someone who has all the feels and a story and interpretations and insecurities, but I'm actually holding your heart. And I would say that even though there's times that I can tell that, that logically you're like, no, don't get, you're wrong. (laughs) Like Mm -hmm. that makes no sense. And get like, I can tell that you're kind of like, Julie, get through the emotion, but then you always approach me with, I hear you. And I think that that's Mm -hmm. the biggest thing is learning to be able to say to each other, I hear you. Mm -hmm. Uh, Because and sometimes even in my processing or even when I think that I'm quote unquote right, I don't actually want to be right. I want to be heard. Yeah. And even for our kids, we say this all the time. You know, I'm thirsty. I hear you. I don't have any water right now, but I I hear your desire for water. I just don't have any in the car right now. I hear you. Yeah. And so that that's huge. It's just the ability to honor the other person. Yeah, a hundred percent. And I think as a believer and as a husband leading the family. There's a difference between leadership and dictatorship. For sure. And being a leader of the house is not saying it's my way. It's saying, okay, I hear you. Will I always go with exactly what you're saying? Mm -hmm. No, because I may have this feeling, this intuition of like, no, that's not the right decision. Or no, we shouldn't do that because of and explain to you. So then we can have a conversation about it as opposed to just saying, no, totally. We can't do that. You can't do that. Yep. Yeah. And I, it's interesting because I can even, I can feel my tone. I can also feel a kid's tone when we use that phrase. I hear you. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like, oh, okay. It doesn't always mean that I'm going to get the exact answer to your point, but it's like, oh, that's all I really wanted is to be, I just wanted to be heard. Mm-hmm. I just wanted to be heard. Yep. And I think in this new, like, it's evolved. Mm-hmm. You know, I think in the, the early, you know, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, it was the man went and worked 
and the woman stayed home and took care of the house. Mm -hmm. That's evolved and changed. And most households, the husband and wife, both spouses work. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's the transparency and the, the conversation of like, here's my roles and responsibility. If you work, um, if you don't work, here's my roles and responsibilities. And here's your roles and responsibilities to make sure that we're on the same page. Yeah. Because then it's like, I don't need to know everything that you're doing. I just need to know that they're getting done. Yeah. Vice versa. Yeah. So we have certain things in our marriage on how we do things. Financially, food-wise, the kids, the school, where Julia takes certain aspects yeah. and makes sure that they're done. We talk about it so I understand it. And then if I want to understand or know it more, then I yeah. ask clarifying questions. Yeah. And I say, well, I want to be a part of that conversation or that meeting. And vice versa. Yeah. And so it's it's a constant, it's going to go back to communication. Yeah. Well, and it's funny that you said that because I was just talking with a couple who were talking about the same thing from very, very different angles. And what it came down to was they both just didn't feel appreciated from the other person. And I think that that's the next kind of layer is that I think that if we're not careful as, as a couple, especially if you're raising kids and, you know, doing all the things and this will be my heartfelt check-in right now here on this podcast is you make these things look easy and they're not easy. You know, the way that you manage our finances and the way that you're running your business and the way that you're, you're handling all of the things and that you're with the kids and the way that you've held our family with this new baby and all of those things, you make it look so easy. And sometimes it just takes me as your wife going, I see you and I, I appreciate what you're doing mm -hmm. because otherwise we get into this. Well, he doesn't do the groceries and he doesn't help me with the kids and he doesn't. And I think it's really easy to start spinning in all of this as mm -hmm. opposed to just going, have I stopped to even just appreciate what you're doing, even though it's quote unquote yours to do right. Or your lane just because it's your lane or just because it, you make it look easy doesn't mean it is. Yeah. And I think that that's another real slippery slope is that we're just not checking in to say, I love you and I appreciate you and you make this look easy, but I can't imagine that it's easy. Yeah. No, I appreciate you saying that. And, and I think we, that is probably the biggest, one of the biggest things for me, mm -hmm. just show appreciation. And, I, and we talk about it and I talk about it probably more so with the kids of like, I will give you the world. I just want to know that you appreciate it and yeah. you see what we're doing. Yeah. For, for you, because a lot of these things that you have, you've had, mm -hmm. like you never not have. You've never not had them. So how am I supposed to be appreciative of <laughs> Yeah, so it's just, it it's normal to you. So you're welcome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> As we're walking out of the, the gym the other day with Malachi and he says, thanks to the instructor. And I, I looked down and I'm like, and? And I'm like, <laughs> you wouldn't be able to say thanks to him if I didn't bring you here. So you're welcome. <laughs> like, I got you here. Train so. the kids in the way that they will go and they will <laughs> depart from it. Just put it this way. <laughs> point it towards me. Just a little bit. Not every single time. But come on, man. <laughs> well, and so I think one of the other things I'd really love to dive into because you have upped my level in this. And I think, you know, we've kind of had this unspoken mantra of the two words that I think of with our marriage is connection and passion. And I remember the day again that you told me not to leave. And I turned and faced like I about faced and I looked at you and I realized that the goal of our relationship is connection. And I think that that's what allows us to fight well. And what I rehearse in my head, even though there's times that I still admit I feel shame when we're talking or I let you down or I disappoint you or I'm frustrated or I'm mad or whatever it is, I can feel all those things in my body. But I have committed to a marriage that is that is going to fight for connection. Like I will fight towards you where mm -hmm. most of us, again, it's like an emotional, I turn my back on you or I just say whatever is on my mind mm -hmm. or I disconnect mm -hmm. mentally or emotionally, or I'm shooting off words that are going to hurt you just to prove a point. And I think that for both of us, we have this internal vow and commitment that says this is for connection. So when I'm done with this conversation, I will know Travis better. This is what I'm saying in my head. I will, mm -hmm. I will know his pain better. I will know his fears better. I will know what he doesn't like that I'm doing better. I will know him better. Doesn't mean it's comfortable. Like it doesn't mean that I, I still take it all in and I'm like, oh, this is the best thing and the most awesome conversation. Mm -hmm. But I'm committed to when that conversation is done, I will know me and you and us better. And it's helped me to be careful of what I say, own what I say, use my words, check my emotions. Like it's my, it's my grid. Yeah. And I think that that has helped a ton is to have some sort of like mantra or point of commitment of I, I will fight for connection here as opposed to fight to be right. 
Well, and, and one of the things, and we've said it multiple times when we're having conversations with other couples, but we've really established the foundation as like friendship. Yeah. Like we're really good friends. Yeah. Like we work together, like we do all the things together. And what I would say that you have done really well is not go outside of our marriage mm-hmm. to seek counsel, especially from other friends or women. Yeah. Because what I've seen over the years with people that they go outside of their marriage and there again, there's a time and a place for it. But majority of the time, if there's communication, there is no need to go outside of the marriage. Yeah. And what you're talking about, just to clarify, is not you're going to a counselor or a therapist. You're going to friends. Friends. Or Instagram. Or or Facebook. Yeah. Your your mom or Mm -hmm. someone outside of, yes, 100%. If you need counseling, see counseling. But I'm I'm talking about like your best friend. Yeah. Like you go to your best friend to get your their thoughts and opinions on your marriage when you haven't even brought it to the table so we can talk about it. Totally. Because what I've also seen that do is disconnect family members. Yeah. So if you go to you know your best friend or your if you had a sister or your mom or whoever and you throw up on them verbally about me mm-hmm. and then we come and fix it and it's good they now have this judgment yeah. on the spouse. Yeah, even and that though, works both ways, yeah. guys too. Yeah. Even though they would love to say, well, I don't think that. No, you will always. You have that thought. Because you didn't get to process it out. You didn't get to kind of be a part of that in, inner working conversation. So I think that it's just a little bit of like a cut, right? That doesn't appear to be that bad in the fabric until all of a sudden you keep pulling and keep pulling and keep pulling. And now you've separated a relationship that didn't even Yeah, and m- m- a lot... A lot of, it tends to be women in the marriage totally. that seek outside their friends and the, you know, mom, sister, whoever it is. Yeah. Um, but I think if, if you can turn to the person and this is in marriage and in business and anything and go to the source yeah. and talk it out, then you, it, it doesn't have time to fester into okay. something that really isn't. Well, and this is even biblically, if you look at the steps of how do you overcome right an issue, it actually says, go to that person, go to that person. It doesn't say go to your friends to process. Cause what I envision is someone standing there going, but you don't understand. I'm just going to my girlfriends to process. No, that the Bible doesn't say that. It doesn't <laughs> say, go talk to your girlfriends about the problem of, with the person. It says, go to the person, talk it out with the person. And if you can't come to amends, then go get a third party. Yeah. So I think that that, I mean, biblically speaking, even shows us like that's the path. And and what it teaches you, if you're like, well, I'm afraid to say this to my husband, practice. <laughs> you yeah. know, like at some level, the only way we're going to get good at this is practicing the thing we want to get good at. So you're going to say things like, hey, I might not say this the right way. Write that down. You're going to say things like, hey, I'm practicing here or I'm verbally processing here or this is not what you mean, but this is what I Feel. Well, that that's that's what I was going to say. One of the biggest things that has helped our marriage is coming to the table and saying, "One, are you open for feedback?" Mm-hmm. Which which you're allowed. You're to allowed say to say no. no, but don't then <laughs> press and have the conversation. Two is to say, "This is how it makes me feel," mm-hmm. and and then go and explain how it makes you feel to get the other side's perspective and opinion. And then sometimes in the midst of a conversation, it's better to talk, process, have the other person talk, process, and then separate and then circle back around after you've had time to kind of think through it and maybe how you would approach it or how you were. Because I'll tell you as a man, it's really hard to take ownership in that moment when you were wrong. Yeah. And so to say... That's not just a man thing. Let's be honest. That is a human thing. Well, a human thing too. And and it goes with your kids too. Like mm-hmm. I've been in situations with all my kids and it had nothing to do with them and something was weighing heavy on me. I take it out on them and five minutes later, I come and apologize to them mm-hmm. and explain to them that it's, it's me. Yeah. And I apologize for how I acted, how I responded. Because I don't want them to think... Like that's one, they carry some shame or something because I blew up on them, but it had nothing to do with them. Totally. Well, and it's funny because now I will hear the kids say, because you and I will go, let me have a minute to think about that because you can tell we're trying to pause our own 
ego, anger, anxiety, whatever. And so now I even heard it last night, Malachi's like, I'm about to ask you a question, but I want you to think about it. <laughs> and, and you can tell that they're giving you space to think and process. And so it's interesting, like the, even our kids, they will start to respond the, to this type of communication. Yeah, don't give me your first response. Yeah. Just sit with it. Because you know I might freak out with that because <laughs> I've told you no a hundred times. So they're like, I just want you to think about it. Or Malachi, now you'll hear him say things like, Aslan, that really frustrates me. Or Nixon the other day was like, that makes me angry when you, and you're like, this, this is, this is, they're listening. They're watching how mm-hmm. we do this. And so it's not again going to be about being perfect as a parent. It's just about being real and going back and owning it, slowing it down. And, and again, to your point, are you open for feedback? And this is how it makes me feel. Yep. And then time. Time to process, time to think about it. If you need to journal it, if you need it, whatever, you go on a walk. Yeah. I've done that too. Like yeah. where it's like, and you give the the, the story and I'll say, I'll say it real quick as we, as we wrap this episode up. But when we were driving back from uh, Lake Havasu, mm-hmm. like six months ago, and we were like 12 hours into this trip and we had like another two hours left. And I was just and then I was also thinking about because a week later or two weeks later, we were going to get back in the car and drive back to Colorado, which is like 16 hours. But then we were going to take another four. So it was going to be like 20 hours. And I was just like, my mind was just going crazy. And obviously we had to pull over a bunch of times. The kids were making noise. So we pulled over on the side of the road in the middle of nowhere for a bathroom break. <laughs> and I walked away from the car and I just let out this like giant scream and I think you were, you were in the car, but the kids like jumped, like not knowing like what happened, what, you know, dad see something or what's going on. And then all of a sudden, cause I turned around and I was like, ah, you know, like, and they <laughs> like all the just cycle. started dying laughing. <laughs> and, and I explained to them, like, I just had this energy and as opposed to turning around and yelling at them to be quiet, I just needed to go take care of it myself. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like it was a little psycho, but you know what? He didn't yell at any of us, and that is the whole point. And and I think for me, you know, and I, I have a video, so I won't go into it in depth, but you can go check out the how to do confrontation well because I walk myself through like almost this four points in my head to like it, when you said in that processing time. Because for me, I need to know is this a mistake or is this a pattern? Is this the thing under the thing? Like if I'm making a decision mm, from good. connection and passion. So I actually have four steps. Go watch the video. I have four steps that I walk myself through. So when I come back around to you, I've actually not just looked at my side. I've got, I've considered yours. I considered mine. I've dug deeper. I've looked at all the things that normally bother me, how I tend to show up. So when I come, I've kind of had this whole assessment, which again, just helps people to feel like we're not on opposite sides here. We're, we're on the same team. Like we're after the same thing here in our marriage, which is connection and passion. And and that's where we're fighting from, which allows us to do this well, mm-hmm. which is also why, yeah. again, we don't fight. It's, it really is intense fellowship and you can feel our intensity, but I think it's because we've committed to doing it well. Yeah. Yeah. The, I mean, once again, the, the communication, Yeah, you have to communicate. You can't bury things and suppress things because it's going to come out in a negative way at some point somehow yeah and i and i think again the way that i would encourage this is as simple and yet as hard as you have you have to start practicing and then going back to again if you go well we don't really have time we have the kids and we have work and no it's about making it making time well it's a it has to be a priority it has to be a priority and i think that again the more we kick the can down the road we create habits in our marriage we create communication routines in our marriage you know like if we only pick it up once a year to talk about it. It's just, it's one of those things that again, we have to create some some new and some fresh and some pattern interrupts. And I mean, even to the point that I, I remember this had to have been seven years ago. I remember the first time Travis was like out of the blue. I remember where I was standing and he's like, hey, how's our sex life for you? And I was like, okay. <laughs> like, are we talking? He looked at me like, well, what do you like? What do you not like? And I, immediately I was like, um, I don't know how to answer this question. <laughs> And it was, but he's like, well, but what you used to like, you may not like, and what you, and I think that that is something that if we're not talking about these things, like how are we even ensuring our sex life is healthy? And how are we ensuring that we're looking at money the same way? And how are we ensuring that we're thinking about our priorities and our parenting and all of these things the same way? And, and not only just the same way for a decade, but once a quarter, like really checking in and going, 
how how's it working for you? How's it going? That's that's a, what's going on in my mind of like he's like we're we sex right <laughs> we're now? We, don't, we don't have enough time. <laughs> That's a totally different podcast and we definitely will do one on there, but it's so important understanding the things that divide and separate marriages Mm -hmm. and sex is one of them. Money is one of them, lack of communication. And so we're going to do another podcast specifically on a few of these topics and dive deeper on just breaking down. Like, how do you communicate Mm -hmm. in the midst of potentially it being an awkward conversation or what you deem to be an awkward conversation, Mm -hmm. but how it can bring your marriage closer and how much better it can be if you have those conversations. You love it. So um, tag your spouse right now. Make sure that they listen to each one of these episodes as we kind of continue to give you the front row seat and how to do this well. Not because we have it down pat or perfectly, but because hopefully it will open up conversations for the people that are in your inner circle so that you too can enjoy a little intense fellowship. Until next time. On behalf of both of us, thank you for listening to another episode of Dream On. Don't forget to visit our website, The Dream Factory and Co. for all the show notes and other tools and resources to get you unstuck, clear, and helping you reprogram your thoughts and beliefs so that you can live out your dreams with a community that supports and challenges you. Until next time, Dream On.